Hey everyone, this session will see how you can speed up your AI development using the LongChain.js framework. The generative AI field is evolving very fast and there's still so much to explore. When things move fast like this, you need to be able to experiment and iterate quickly. First to validate your ideas with a prototype, then to scale up to production if it works. Now let me introduce you to LongChain.js, a JavaScript library for working with large language models. If the name sounds familiar, it's because it's the sister project of LongChain, which is made for Python, and it's one of the most popular open source projects in the AI community. It's a great tool for experimenting and building generative AI apps very quickly. So what's LongChain.js? LongChain.js is an open source JavaScript library for working with LLMs. It provides high-level abstraction for all the components you might need when creating your AI application. And thanks to the compatibility layer, it makes it easy to swap components like models or vector database, allowing to quickly switch from local to cloud resources. It also gives you all the tools that you need to create complex workflows that use your own data like RAG applications. Now let's take a look at some of the core concepts of the framework. LongChain includes helpers to create prompt templates. It allows to inject user input and parameters or augment the context of your prompt dynamically. In this simple example, we have a chat prompt template to generate jokes on a specific topic. And when invoking the template, we can set which topic we want and the placeholder in the prompt will be updated. This is especially useful when you're building complex workflows where the prompt is augmented in different steps. Now, speaking of workflows, LongChain was built to compose complex AI workflows made from multiple processing sequences. Here, we're using a prompt template with a few components. Let's detail how it works. First, we define a type for the output object that we want. We initialize chat model. Here, we're using OpenAI's GPT-4 O Mini. Next, we define our prompt template, where we also ask the output format that we want. Then we create a parser to transform JSON into an object conforming to the joke type that we defined. And we define our workflow called a chain. We take our template, we pipe it to the chat model to generate the response, and pipe the response to the output parser. And finally, we invoke our chain with our parameter and we'll get our object as a result. LongChain provides many components that you can use to build your AI application, and we've already seen a few. We have chat models that provide a compatibility layer, allowing you to switch between AI models from different providers easily. It makes it very easy to compare different models' results or to switch from local to cloud models. And it's the same for embeddings when you need to transform text into vectors. There are all sorts of documents helper to load data from various sources and formats, like office documents, YouTube videos, web pages, GitHub repos, and more. You also have everything you need to process the text from these documents, like splitting it in smaller pieces or automatically tagging the content to add metadata. Then we have the stores and retrievers. Vector stores allow you to store documents and perform vector search, while the regular store is used as a memory to save your chat sessions. Retrievers can be used to load documents from various sources, including a vector store, to implement the rack pattern. And finally, we have tools which are functions that can be called by agents to perform various tasks, like generating an image, executing code, querying an API, and more. Let's see a practical example of how you can use LongChain.js to quickly create an application prototype that works locally first and then deploy it to Azure. For this demo, I wanted to build an API where I can send a link to a YouTube video and ask a question so I can get an answer without having to watch the video. Let's see how we implemented that with LongChain.js. So first, because we're working on a prototype, we'll just hard code the YouTube video URL here and the question. So this video was the last Microsoft Ignite keynote 
which was about an hour long. And I would like to get an answer to a simple question. What were the news about GPT-4 models that were announced uh, during this video? So let's see how to implement our uh, prototype in there. First, we'll use the YouTube loader component to load uh, the transcript of the video. We specify that you want, we want it in English. And once we've loaded uh, the text from the YouTube video, we'll use the recursive character text splitter component to split this huge amount of text. Remember, it's uh, more than one hour of video. That means that we have a lot of text. We want to split it in smaller pieces of text. So the right process uh, that we'll implement will be able to be more accurate, uh, to more finely accurate the piece of content that it needs to answer the question. So here, uh, we use chunks of 1,000 and a half character with some overlap. We run the splitter on the raw text to get our set of documents in there. Next, we initialize the model and database. And here, I'm using Oliama with local models that I'm running on my local machine in there. So I'm using this very small uh, embedding model to convert the text into vectors. And I'm using uh, the Llama free model to generate the answer. For the vector store, I'm using uh, this local store in there. Next, to create my knowledge base, uh, I can do that in one simple call in there on my vector store, add documents. What it will do behind the scene is for every piece of documents, every piece of text that we generated uh, above, we will create a vector and we'll store the vector along with the text into uh, our vector store. Next, we create uh, our processing chain. So here we have our template first. Answer the user's question using only the sources below. And we put a context placeholder where we, where we will inject the result from our vector search. And then we inject uh, the human question here uh, in the impute placeholder. Next, we create a retriever from our vector store so we're able to search for matching documents. We implement the right chain in there using a long chain component where we simply give in our prompt and the model we want to use to generate the answer. And finally, we invoke our chain here by passing in our user question and the documents invoking the retriever to perform a vector search that will return the best matching documents uh, that might be able to help answer that question. And finally, we just print the result to the console. So let's see how it works. Now I get the answer for my question, what are the news about GPT-4 models? So according to the text, there is an announcement about GPT-4 Turbo model being available in Azure OpenAI service. Additionally, uh, there's GPT-4 Turbo with vision, allowing to prompt with video images. And yeah, it's the same price as OpenAI. It's also mentioning that fine tuning of GPT-4 and OpenAI service will be introduced. So yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, now, the next thing is that, okay, I have a working prototype in there that works entirely locally. But what do I need to change if I want to take this prototype and make it a production application that will be able to run on Azure? Let's see the changes that are needed uh, to the code. First, we'll update uh, the imports. So instead of the Oliama and local database, we'll be using Azure components. As for loading documents, nothing has to change in there. Next, we'll see what we have to change uh, in the model initialization. So instead of Oliama embeddings, I want to be able to use uh, Azure OpenAI embeddings. Same for the chat model. And again, the same for the Azure AI vector store. So we'll be using Azure AI search uh, our, as our vector database in there. Before embedding the documents, uh, since we are going to production, we'll just add 
a simple step in there to search if documents are already indexed uh, in our database before running uh, the process again. So, okay, that sounds about right. I take the video ID from the YouTube URL and search if I already have some documents inside my database. And uh, let's say that if I don't have documents in there, I run uh, the embedding process. Just a simple change. Next, regarding uh, running the chain, I don't have to change anything uh, because of the long chain abstraction layer. So I can just swap in the components like I just did with the models and vector stores and everything else uh, is basically the same. So now let's try running this again. And here I get my answer with slightly more details uh, because yeah, it's using a GPT-4 Turbo model to answer a question about GPT-4 Turbo. So yeah, uh, we have get more details about the introduction of GPT-4 Turbo with some features, uh, about the pricing that we've seen, GPT-4 Turbo with vision and fine tuning. So basically the same answer with a slightly different wording. So yeah, this time I have uh, a code that is able to use Azure components. So the only thing that I would need to do to be able to run uh, this code on Azure is basically put all that code inside a serverless function so I can run it as an API. If you want to take a closer look at this demo, you'll find the link to the GitHub repo in the video description. In the next video, we'll detail how you can install and use local AI models on your machine using Oliama like I just did in the demo.